Welcome back. This bike is about two years old and the manual says you should change the brake fluid every two years regardless of mileage. Obviously looking after your brakes is extremely important. We're fond of going fast but we're also really quite fond of stopping. Uh, so I'm going to get on with it and show you how to do it right now. You really don't need much for this job. I've bought some DOT4 brake fluid. You need an 8mm spanner to undo the bleed valve and you need some pipe to put over the bleed valve and take away the brake fluid. Uh, I think it's also helpful to have one of these plastic syringes to take out the excess fluid from the reservoir. I've also just got an old jug to put the old brake fluid in and a bottle. This was a brake bleeding kit from a car but you could use a coke bottle with a hole drilled in the top, that'd be fine. Right now it's worth pointing out, brake fluid is a very effective paint stripper, it's nasty stuff. So we do not want to spill a drop on the bike's paintwork or anywhere else. So let's get some cloths or towels, rags, and put them around the reservoir so there's no chance of getting any anywhere we don't want it. So now we can take off the cap on the reservoir carefully. Just wipe some fluid off the seal there. I'm going to use the syringe to suck out the extra brake fluid from the reservoir so we don't have to push it all through the pipe. And I've just got a jug to dispose of the old stuff. Right, now they say you should only use brake fluid from a sealed container. After you've opened it, uh, and left it on the shelf for a couple of years, it starts to absorb moisture. Uh, so, so it's okay to keep it for a month or two for a little top up, but um, after that, if you're changing the brake fluid, it really should be a new container. Because I only need a small amount, and I don't think this bottle pours very well, I'm going to be super fussy and fill this up with a syringe. Now throughout the process, we want to make sure the reservoir stays topped up. We do not want to suck air down into the pipe. Okay, the front brake bleeds through this valve here. So we'll open up the dust cover and then attach our hose. I've gone with a longer hose so we can see all the brake fluid as it comes out. Not sure who I got this tip from on YouTube, I must find out and thank them. Let's just put the end into the bottle there. I don't even know if we will get that much brake fluid out. Okay, here's the technique. We need to squeeze the front brake lever and then while keeping pressure on there, we open the valve. We don't let go of the front brake lever until we've closed the valve. So we never have the valve open without pressure from the brake lever above. That was easier than I thought. Okay, so I close the valve before I let go of the brake lever. And we'll go again, pressure on the brake lever, open the valve, close the valve, release the brake lever. After about five or six squeezes of the brake lever, I can see that the level in the reservoir is going down. So let's add a bit, keep it topped up. And the idea is, by using the really long tube, you can start to compare the oldest fluid with the new fluid that's just coming out. Now, I really can't see any difference there because the brake fluid's not that old. If you do suck some air into the reservoir, it's not a disaster. You're just going to have to flush all the fluid through the pipe uh, and you'll start to see air bubbles coming out here when you've pushed them down. And so you just keep going until no more air bubbles come. Uh, it's just clean brake fluid. Put the dust cap back on and that is the front lever 
bled. And I'm just going to wipe and replace the cap with its seal. Okay, now we need to get the seat and side panel off so we can do the rear combi brake. As you may know, this bike has linked front and rear braking, which means uh, if you squeeze the front brake lever, just the front brake operates. But if you push the pedal, both the back and front brakes operate. So as I push the pedal, you can see this linkage here does two things. It pulls this rod, this silver rod here, which activates the rear drum brake but it also pushes this linkage here, which pushes on the cylinder and pushes brake fluid to the second a piston inside the caliper. It's two completely separate systems inside one caliper. So the bleed valve for that one is here and the reservoir of fluid for that piston is up here. So I'm gonna take off the uh, top here that looks tricky. Can I do that without getting the tank off? Yeah, that's interesting. You can't um, get to this screw on the top of this reservoir with the reservoir in place. So let's unbolt it here. And then you can open the top. It will sort of stay there on its own. Uh, if you're careful. Find me these are long screws. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's gone all the way through to the bottom and uh, screwed through the rubber membrane so you had to screw it out all the way. This would be a very easy place to get brake fluid on the paintwork so watch your fingers here. Okay, you need to be a bit more careful with that one and be careful not to damage this rubber seal as well. Let's give it a little wipe. I'll use the same method as before just using the syringe to suck out the old fluid. Working slowly, careful not to drip anywhere you're not supposed to. It's very good advice. So once again, I'm gonna put the hose on the bleed valve just there. I will use the syringe this time to fill up the reservoir because it's difficult to get the bottle close enough. And with this reservoir in your eye line, it's gonna be much easier to remember to keep it topped up. Okay, so now we push on the pedal, open the bleed valve, push some fluid through, close the valve. Now I didn't see much color change with the, uh, with the other one. So this time I'm just gonna do about the same amount. I'm gonna do two or three reservoirs worth pushed through and fill up all this long pipe I've got here. It looks like the uh, fluid is draining back in there, but all that's happening is it's, it's running down the wall of the pipe down to the bottom. That's fine, we're not sucking air into the piston. Okay, let's stop to fill up the reservoir again. You know what, I might actually advise doing the rear first because you can see the reservoir. Uh, so you can see how many pumps you do before it starts to drain. It's also harder work pushing this pedal. Uh, so just do the hard job first, eh? And 
leaving the fluid level in the reservoir between the lower and upper mark. We'll just put the seal back on and screw on the lid. And then bolt it back into place. Okay, overall I'd say that was pretty easy. Um, the hardest part was making sure you remember to keep checking the reservoir, especially the one up here that you can't see, to make sure you don't draw any air into the system. Obviously, as soon as you're done, you're gonna test the brakes very carefully. First by pushing the bike on the road, then go at a walking speed, then a little bit faster and so on until you're absolutely confident the brakes are good. Coming up soon on the channel, I need to clean the oil strainer screen, which is behind this clutch case cover. Um, so I've got the gasket and I'm looking up how to do it. It will mean changing the oil, which I've done before. Um, so do subscribe to make sure you see that. Um, and if you haven't yet, you might want to check out the oil change video, as I will, to remind myself what I'll need to do.